that. Great. Okay, well, go ahead uh, and take over to Austin for his 10-minute uh, opening statement. Austin, uh, the floor is all yours. It's your first word. All right. How's it going? Um, let me let me go over here and show my show, my slideshow, and I'm going to share if that's cool. All right. Cool. And that was um, that was cool, man. We'll get into it. So uh, we were all told that the Earth is a ball that's moving through space. That was a bit exaggerated, of course, but anyway. So the question is: Is the Earth moving? I wanted to throw this in here. This is hilarious to me. There's a quote from Einstein. The gift of fantasy has meant more to me than my talent for observing or absorbing positive knowledge. And that's because the heliocentric model is a fantasy. Hence why it changes every couple of days. But uh, another quote from him. I never made one of my discoveries through the process of rational thinking. What is it about cosmology that would completely dismiss rationale? I don't know. That seems weird. Um, I covered this the last time. I'm going to kind of breeze through this part, but. This is the infamous Michelson Morley. It's called the most famous felt experiment in history. I showed actually that the Earth wasn't moving. So to answer one of your questions, why would they why would they stick to this idea of space and all that? Well, it's called the cosmological principle, which is the idea that the Earth cannot occupy a special or unique position in the universe. If it does, of course, that has uh, serious philosophical implications. So they came up with a whole new physics that space is the fourth dimension and stuff been more, but you can't tell, blah, blah, blah. Here's him talking about it. Since then, I've come to believe that the motion of the Earth cannot be detected by the any optical experiment. Though the Earth is revolving around the sun, it's him admitting he believes it but can't prove it. Here he is also saying that you can't use any terrestrial experiments to do that. Um, and every attempt to try to detect the orbit of the Earth was negative result. Here is another quote I found recently from him. Uh, and I think it's funny because people get really triggered when I bring up quotes. I, I don't know why. I'm just like articulating the position that you guys hold. Anyway, uh, but when I was a student, I saw that experiments of this kind had already been made, in particular by your compatriot, I guess, uh, Mickelson. He proved that one does not notice anything on Earth that it moves, but that everything takes place on Earth as if, as if the Earth is in a state of rest. So according to the current paradigm, we're actually tilted, wobbling, gyrating, spinning, revolving around the sun, shooting through space, but everything takes place as if it was at rest. So if someone can't actually absorb that that's what they believe, it, it puts me in this weird, awkward position where I have to defend, or you have to like, I have to argue with you about what you believe. We can't even get to the actual substance of the conversation. So hopefully we can surpass that tonight. Here's an infamous observation. It's called the Black Swan. The horizon should be 1.2 miles away. The, the camera was just over the water. Uh, you see the horizons beyond the furthest uh, platform there almost 10 miles away, which would require a radius of 264,000 miles. It's just weird. I mean, people just say the word refraction. They don't understand it. They don't know what terrestrial fraction is or how we guide it. They just say it. They just say a word. It's like a religion, you know, like you get words and phrases and you chant them from the stands and then you pass around the donation plate. Anyway, um, here is a first radio transmission sent across the Atlantic Ocean. Um, Marconi, they told him that he wouldn't be able to send it more than 200 miles because the curvature of the earth would block it. He actually said that 2,200 miles successful the first transmission using a horizontal propagation over the ocean. Since then, we've actually done them, and even he did them, as far as 10,000 miles. 10,000 miles, horizontal propagation. The curvature of the Earth should have blocked it at 200 miles. Super awkward. The people also say, why, don't, why doesn't Woods ever bring flat Earth evidence? Uh, that's what this is. So pay attention to this part, please. Instead of just saying, I didn't bring evidence, let's pay attention to the positive evidence that I'm I'm putting forth here instead of just hand-waving it. It's awkward. All right, so uh, plane survey data, right? So plane surveying is a survey in which the Earth's surface is assumed to be a plane, and the curvature of the Earth is ignored. Survey works up to 100 square miles, and they, our surveys that are up to 100 square miles are treated as a plane. So this is how we actually make measurements on the Earth. This is how we have those maps you guys are so proud of. Uh, plane surveys are carried out for engineering projects on sufficiently large scale to determine relative or positions of individual features of the Earth's surface. Plane surveys are used for the layout of highways, railways, canals, fixing boundary pillars, construction of bridges, factories, etc. The scope and use of plane surveys is very wide. For majority of engineering projects, plane surveying is the first step to execute them. Plane surveys are basically needed for proper economical and accurate planning of all engineering projects and their practical significance cannot be uh, overestimated. So that's how we actually do things in the real world. So how is this not positive evidence? If you're making a claim antithetical to we have to survey the Earth as if a plane to build everything, 
if you're claiming it's actually not that, you you have a substantial burden of proof. It, this, this is objectively positive evidence <laughs> that the Earth's a plane. I know it's uncomfortable, but whatever. Uh, here's something seen from 163 miles away. There should be 10,000 uh, feet of curvature blocking these mountains, and you can see them. And in fact, you can see them once the sun goes up behind them, and you see the outline, the silhouette of it. These should be completely blocked. Why can't we see the mountains? See, we just went out and tested the Earth, bro. It's it's not what they said. Don't make it awkward, right? Like, here's Chicago from like uh, 70 plus miles away. Why can't we see all of it? It should all be blocked based on the curvature of the Earth. As soon as the sun goes down behind it, you can see it. I talked to locals here. They said that you see it all the time. You see it three or four times a week. Here's a military uh, document, Propagation of Electromagnetic Fields Over a Flat Earth for Ground Weapon Systems. It's actually a, a weapon system the military uses. And they treat it as a flat earth, a dielectric plane specifically. So why? Why, why would you not account for curvature for using a weapon system? Uh, here's a laser test. We see far beyond the curvature of the earth like we always do. Here is a question that people love to ask. How could you have things disappear bottom up if the earth was flat? Well, you can have a lensing effect. Right here you will see that the sun you, on the right is moving towards you up above the table, but it looks like it's coming from the bottom up, from behind the mountains. So it's very simple. Here's the sun. It actually uh, disappears into the horizon, not behind a physical curved horizon. You can see it. It disappears up above the water into the horizon, which is the vanishing point. So that's not a physical location. So to say it is, is weird. So I'm going to breeze through some of these because these are what we always get. And um, fallacies, logical fallacies are, you know, an invalidation of your argument. Okay. So if you appeal to the authority saying, well, this authority said it, it must be true. That's a fallacy. Uh, if you say, Witsit well, doesn't have the proper credentials to talk about this. So his argument must automatically be wrong. That's a fallacy. Poisoning the well. So, oh, all flat earthers think this. Flat earthers think everyone's lying. Flat earthers are the same one that didn't inject themselves with 47 boosters. Whatever you say to discredit that side's position preemptively, it's called poisoning the well, which if you saw my debate with conspiracy cats, that was his opening argument. Okay, that's a fallacy. You got it. Everyone knows ad hominem fallacies. I'm bringing these up because they are reoccurring. It's like Groundhog Day every time I debate on here. A bunch of fallacies. So if you attack the person instead of the argument, that's an ad hominem fallacy. Texas sharpshooter fallacy is like what they do with geodetic surveying. You basically draw a circle on the wall, then shoot the, or you actually shoot your gun at the wall, then you walk over there and draw your target around where you shot. So that's not like you didn't actually hit the target. Geodetic surveying does this by throwing out lots of the measurements. So that may come up most of the time when people say there's evidence of curvature, this is what they do. Uh, there's a false dilemma fallacy also referred to as a false dichotomy or false binary. Um, or all or nothing fallacy saying, well, it has to be this way or there's no other way that comes up a lot as well. Appeal to emotion is one of the biggest ones we get. And that's just fallacious. Like to like, oh man, um, you know, there's no way everyone could be lying or, oh man, you think everything's a lie or whatever it is. You're appealing to emotion. That's fallacious. This is the biggest one though. And we have what a minute 40 left shifting the burden of proof. Now I say the earth's a plane. They're like, you have to burn of proof as a positive claim. That is a positive claim. And saying the earth is flat is a positive claim as well. And that is flat is not a shape. That's a description of a surface. Okay. Like I told you, we substantiate that every day with plane survey. That's how we do engineering. So we have substantiated that we treat the earth as a plane. We measure it as a plane. We shoot radio transmissions as if the earth is a plane, et cetera. You guys are claiming that the earth's actually not a plane, though. It's a spinning ball that's curving, flying through a vacuum. So you have the burden of proof. You have to substantiate that positive claim that's antithetical to empirical evidence. You have to substantiate to us. We were all told the same thing. We used to believe the same thing that you think, right? So we just, we would love some evidence for your claim instead of shifting it over to us. Oh, where's your model, Austin? Well, she just gave birth. So appeal from incredulity is left. basically like, oh, I can't understand how the earth could be flat. So it couldn't be that. A fallacy. Argument ad populum. Everyone thinks the earth's a ball. Fallacy. Strawman fallacy is one of the most popular ones. If the earth was flat, this should happen. This should happen. This is how it works on a flat earth. Wits it thinks this. Flat earthers say this. If you're not representing the actual position or argument, that's a strawman fallacy, also known as one of the most dishonest fallacies that exist. Red herring fallacy, very common fallacy in these debates. If I bring something up and then you shift it over to make it look like it's part of the subject, but actually you're changing the subject, red herring fallacy, invalidate your argument. Uh, we don't have much time. Begging the question, it's a logical fallacy in which an argument's premise assume the truth of the conclusion. If we assume the Earth's a ball, then look at the sky. Then look, what we assume matches the sky because that's how we came up with the ball. Therefore, Earth's a ball. 
That's a fallacy. And so basically, in summary, the use of fallacious arguments, especially with the intention of deceiving, is the definition of sophistry. So I would hope maybe we can have an honest uh, conversation void of fallacies, and I think it'll be much more productive uh, than usual. So that's pretty